Hi guys and welcome to this week's vlog. I'm in this amazing place. Very excited today. My pal took receipt, uh, God, in September of two R6s. He's a professional photographer and filmmaker, but he's had his two cameras without stating the obvious sat in a cupboard doing nothing. So I've managed to blag one of his R6s just to use or utilize on a quick shoot which is what I'm doing now. So I'm quite excited about that. He's desperate to try and get me to upgrade. If you're a regular to this channel, that you'll know that I love and adore my Canons. I love and adore my 5Ds. In actual fact, I've never even upgraded to a Canon 5D Mark IV. I still use a Canon 5D Mark III. And I can't really see a reason to upgrade, but maybe this year I might consider upgrading. I'd certainly look at the R5. I'm not too sure about the R6, but I'd possibly upgrade to the R5. But having said all of that, I've lived in Yorkshire for 30 years and I think a bit of Yorkshire is rubbing off on me now and I just don't like spending money. But Lee is so taken back by this camera. He's desperate for me to give it a go because he's convinced that I'll change my mind and I'll rush out and I'll, I'll order one of these straight away. I'm at Malham, I'm photographing the Lone Tree. I've photographed here before and I just want to take a couple of shots, nothing special. I want to take a couple of shots and then take the exact same shots with my Canon 5D Mark III just to make a comparison. So I'm not going to review the camera, but I play around with the camera. It's a lovely feel, it's a, it seems to be fantastic. I've got no issue with any of that. I've not used it apart from right now. So if you're looking for a review video, sorry you've come to the wrong place, but if you're looking for somebody who's happy to compare images from a camera he normally uses, which is the Canon 5D Mark III, like I said a minute ago, to the R6, then you've come to the right place. A 
bit of a strange one this actually because <laughs> I think I made a film here possibly three years ago when I very first started this YouTube channel or certainly when I started vlogging. Um, so it's, a, it's a full circle for me. It's quite interesting. Um, I'll leave a link to that video up there because it is quite a I think it's quite a good video, I'm going to say that, because I starred in it. I think I'm wearing a different jacket, actually, so that's not a bad thing, is it? <laughs> it's a beast. An absolute... I've got to turn that off. An app. Look at that. That's the 24-105mm lens on there, can you see? And that's 28 to 70 mil. That is a quality, quality bit of glass. Well, it certainly feels like it. Like I say, I haven't put it to the test yet. Don't drop. All right, let's give this a go. Right now, the techie stuff. I'm just going to set this up in manual and just take a picture as I would do with my own camera. So in other words, camera set to manual, go through the normal routine, ISO 100, probably going to shoot this at F11 and then just adjust my shutter speed according to whatever light is available to us. Camera body, as you know, is the R6. On here is the mighty 28 to 70 f2 lens. It's meant to be super, super sharp. So I think I'm more excited about trying this lens out than I am the camera. But yeah, by the way, in combination, <laughs> it's it's a big bulk of a unit. It is super heavy to carry. Oh, but uh, I'm not here to judge any of that. Like I say, I'm just simply here to use it to shoot landscapes as I would do my Canon 5D Mark III. It does feel good though. Uh, typical with a high-end camera brand. The feel of it, really, really top-notch. So I'm quite excited about that. Right, so I now need to look around for a few more compositions. I want to try and um, utilize a bit more of the snow in the shots as well the only thing with this lens though as a landscape photographer it's 28 mil um, it's just not quite wide enough but uh, that's not going to be too much of an issue here is it that's one shot in the bag now 5d mark 3 24 to 105 mil lens on there it's in exactly the same position. I've not moved the tripod at all, but I will shoot this at 24 mil. It's difficult to gauge 28 mil. I could always just zoom in anyway with my crop. So exactly the same. Uh, ISO 100, F11, shutter speed, focus a third of the way into the frame. I'm not focus stacking. Exactly the same. I'm not going to create multiple exposures. There's no bracketing and I'm not using any filters on the front just to make so I can make a fair comparison. There you go. That's it. Simple as that. That's looking quite nice. The thing is, I'm not here to find fault with the camera. I don't want to find fault with the camera. If anything, I want to be blown away by the camera. I want this to smack me in the face and say, Gary, why on earth haven't you upgraded your camera? Um, I'm out with people for training with, with, with modern cameras all the time. And I never see any results any better than the Canon 5D Mark III. And I'm not joking, and that's why I just never upgraded to the Canon 5D Mark IV. I was looking forward to the Canon 5D Mark V and I was gutted when the Canon 5D Mark V was shelved, probably in favour of the R5. Mm. 
So I was a bit gutted by that, but maybe it's time I thought about upgrading. But yeah, I really want this to be fantastic. I don't want to find fault with it. I don't want to start slagging it off. I want it to be brilliant. So I'm actually crossing my fingers. Um, yeah, I mean, how old is my Canon 5D Mark III now? I bet it's what, it's six years, seven year old? Might even be older than that. Can't remember how old it, but I've had it a long time. I'd love to do a shutter, a shutter count on it. That'd be quite cool. But yeah, anyway, I'm waffling. All right, that's it. Let's get something for a thumbnail. One second, thumbnail, hang on. So, don't you have to make one of those silly faces? <laughs> that's what they do, isn't it? If you want clickbait, if you want a real clickbait title, hang on. Oh, ooh. <laughs> yeah, that's me done. I wanted this video to be short and sweet. Uh, I just wanted to make just a comparison. Honestly, I'm not joking. I'm not here to find fault with it. I want to be blown away by it. It's not a full on review. It's just a review from a, a landscape photographer and making a simple comparison from the camera and lens he normally uses to obviously a much more modern camera and lens. Right. Over to me in the studio. Really, really good to get your hands on new equipment and I thoroughly enjoyed using the R6 and it is a wonderful camera. But right off the bat, there is no way I would ever swap my Canon 5D Mark III for the R6, right off the bat. Now, if you're interested in the reasons why, by the way, that's not to say that I think that the R6 is a bad camera. Far from it, the R6 is an amazing camera. But it's just not worthwhile me upgrading my Canon 5D Mark III. If you're interested in that, then just bear with me for, for five minutes. Listen to my waffle for five minutes and hopefully you can draw something from it. But I'm going to show you the images that I took and make a direct comparison between the R6 and the Canon 5D Mark III. But I'll also let you download the six images that I took, three with the R6 and three with the Canon 5D Mark III, so you can make a comparison yourself. It's not a scientific review, or it is. That's up to you to decide. In other words, if you're a landscape photographer, you're not interested in what the camera can do. It's just, is it better at taking landscape pictures than the camera that you're currently using? And that's the only scientific review I need. Everything else is just hogwash, I'm not really interested. But look, hey, you know, I'm waffling. The long and short of it is simply this. I'm using nine-year-old technology. I therefore want to be blown away by brand new technology that's just come out that's nine years newer. I want to be blown away by that, I do. I want to be embarrassed in thinking, oh my God, you know, I'm still using the Canon 5D Mark III. 
That's shocking of me, especially because, you know, I teach photography. I'm out training all the time, obviously, with the exception of the lockdown, of course. Um, but being a teacher and being a professional in this industry also gives me the opportunity to see other brands, other makes, other models all the time. I used to teach here in a studio every week. So I would constantly see new technology. I would always check it out. And to be honest, I've always been more blown away by the cheaper models coming through than I have been with the more expensive ones. Right, let's stop waffling. Let's throw ourselves into Photoshop and let's just have a look at these images. And let me make a comparison between both of these cameras. And like I say, please feel free to download these images and make a comparison yourself. The link is in the description below. Leave a comment, let me know what you think. Okay, so let's have a look. The first image that I took between them both. So let's just open these up in to Photoshop so we can have a closer look at them. I haven't done any post-production work with these images at all. Nothing, you can see here, these are flat profiled images straight off the camera. And I'm now going to open them both up in Photoshop. So these were taken pretty much at the same time. There might have been 15 minutes between uh, each of these images, as you can see by the movement in the clouds, about 15 minutes. They were taken at the same camera settings, so we know the lighting and everything is going to be perfect, although it might be slightly different because obviously the sun was dropping and yeah, 15 minutes between them both, but I'm not bothered about that. They're both perfect. All right, so what I'm going to do now then, they both look identical. So this is the test. I'm now going to zoom in on each of them. I'm going to zoom in at 100%. If you look down here, they're now zoomed in at 100%. And let's look around this tree area. This is the Canon 5D Mark III. It's also important to note as well that the images shot on the Canon 5D Mark III were taken on my 24 to 105 mil lens, which is, although it's a pro lens, it's renowned to be less sharp than all the other pro lenses, which I find laughable anyway. But according to the scientists, <laughs> the, the 24 105 is the least sharp of all of the pro lenses that are supplied by Canon. But again, take that nonsense with a pinch of salt because I use it all the time and I don't have any issues whatsoever. It's a brilliant lens. The R6 was taken on that outstanding lens that costs £2,000, roughly £2,000, which was, I think, the 28 to 70 f two lens, which is an amazing lens. So just the lens alone should make my images look terrible. So you've got brand new R6 technology with probably one of the best lenses that's ever been produced by Canon. So you have that as a combination against nine year old technology and a very soft lens. So bear that in mind. So this is the Canon 5D Mark III. And that looks perfectly fine to me. If I now click on the R6, so I now want to be blown away by this. So let's zoom in again, 100%. And I'm gonna pull them up close here. And now we can make just a rough comparison. Um, both shot with the same settings. Is there a difference? I could possibly say that the R6 might edge it ever so slightly. Um, looks fantastic there's absolutely nothing wrong with it whatsoever let's click on this here and let's have a look at mine and i can't really see too much of a difference i'm just looking at the edges here yeah okay you know you can argue that the r6 possibly edges it i've got no issue with that it possibly edges it but it certainly won't be noticeable at all by the time you finish post-processing this image now with regards to the lens Okay, they were both focused in the same place. So I'm gonna look for any kind of chromatic aberration. I'm gonna look for any softness in the corners. That's the Canon 5D Mark III. This wasn't focus stacked or anything. At f11, I focused a third of the way into the frame as I did with both of these. So I'm expecting the corners to be a little bit soft. And here, perfect. In the corner, right in the corner, I can see it's a little bit soft. Let's look at the R6 now. Again, 
here, focus in the same place. All right, how much of a difference is there? There's just, you can see for yourself, I want to be blown away. I want to think, oh my God, you know, it's so embarrassing. I'm still using a Canon 5D Mark III, but I'm really not. Now, I know some of you guys will be turned off by this. Oh, you know, what's he talking about? You know, but the proof is in the pudding. Download the damn files and make a comparison for yourself. They were both taken pretty much, or all these images were pretty much taken at the same settings as each other. And as you can see between them both, the difference is negligible. And I'm talking negligible. Negligible, negligible, negligible. Honestly, it's, it's crazy. Okay, so in conclusion then, would I therefore buy an R6? And the answer is no, I wouldn't if we were just talking about landscape photography. I think the R6 is a fantastic camera. The R6 has got so many fantastic positives about it. The flip out screen, the screen looks great. The focusing is awesome. The video is tremendous. I used the R6 to do a little bit of video in, as you saw in the film, and I loved it. I thought it was top notch and the quality was perfect, but, and far superior from, without stating the obvious, the Canon 5D Mark III. So if I was looking at buying a new camera because I was a wedding videographer, for instance, there would be no question. Of course, I would rush out and buy it. There are so many positives, let alone the quality. Um, if I created commercial films, for instance, then yes, it's the same answer. But as a landscape photographer, going out week in, week out, taking landscape pictures, then first and foremost, I need, if I wanted to upgrade, I need a camera that's going to produce better pictures, nothing else. If you came to me and said, okay, Gary, you know, I want to buy a new camera to take landscape pictures, what would you recommend? I wouldn't recommend the Canon 5D Mark III unless you were on a budget. I would recommend the Canon 5D Mark IV. That seems to be the go-to camera for most landscape photographers, as is, before you shout at me, the Nikon D850, which is a terrific camera, as is the Sony A7R, I think. Um, I, I just wouldn't buy Sony because their menu systems are disgusting, but the cameras are brilliant, very well made, and of course they produce fantastic images, which is the most important um, aspect really um yeah so uh, take this review as a pinch of salt if it's not for you i don't have a problem with that but for me if i want to upgrade my you know old technology now then first and foremost i want to be blown away by the images they produce and i don't think that they do I can't wait to get my hands on the R5 because I am expecting the R5 to blow the um, 5D Mark III out of the water, unquestionably. Um, but I will get my hands on that and I will do a review and I will make a comparison because I do want to upgrade my Canon 5D Mark III. But like I keep saying, it's all about the damn pictures. Are they going to produce better pictures? That's ultimately what it's all about. And as you can see for yourself, I personally feel that it's negligible. And I mean negligible. Right, so this has just been a simple review. I was going to say by a simple photographer. Uh, leave it. <laughs> it's just a simple review by a landscape photographer who goes out week in, week out, taking landscape pictures. Nothing any more than that. I do want to upgrade my gear, but... If I upgrade my gear, it has to be to a camera that produces far superior pictures to the camera that I'm currently using. Right, thank you very much indeed. If you wanna leave a comment, then please do so below. I love reading your comments and I pretty much answer all of them as well. Until the next time, if you've enjoyed this video, by the way, give me a thumbs up, help support the channel. And if you think the content is worthy of it, subscribe. Cheers, guys.